Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another best of three deck, this time a blue-black mill control deck featuring Lockmere Serpent as one of its win conditions, a 6 mana 7-7 seven, seven Serpent with Flash, so we can play it at instant speed, works nicely alongside our other instant speed plays, and we can also sacrifice islands to make it unblockable, so it can maybe kill the opponent in just 3 attacks regardless of blockers. We can sacrifice swamps to gain life and draw cards, and we can even get the Serpent back from our graveyard to our hand if we can exile 5 cards from an opponent's graveyard. And then looking at the rest of the deck, we've got a lot of the typical blue-black control cards, some removal, some counter spells, but we also have a lot of mill synergy cards, or cards that get better once the opponent has a certain amount of cards in their graveyard. So let's take a look at the entire deck at one mana. We've got the full playset of Murfolk Secret Keeper, which can enable all those opposing graveyard synergies, as it can put four cards from their library into their graveyard, and also turns into a 0-4 blocker afterwards, which can help us uh, protect our life total. Then one of the mill payoff cards is Vantress Gargoyle, which is a 2-mana 5-4 with flying, which of course would be very powerful, but it does have some limitations. It can only block if we have 4 or more cards in hand, which is usually not a problem in the early game, as we'll start with a lot of cards in hand, so in the early game it's a pretty effective blocker. And then it can only attack if the opponent has 7 or more cards in their graveyard, so that's where cards like the Secret Keeper can speed up the process, but the Gargoyle can also fuel itself, as we can tap it to put the top card of each player's library into their graveyard, so eventually the Gargoyle can just start attacking. Then we also have the full playset of a Drown in the Lock, which is also a card that relies on the opponent having a certain amount of cards in their graveyard to be effective, as it can counter target spell with convert mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard, and destroy target creature with convert mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller graveyard as well. So it doesn't do much in the early game if we can't fuel the opponent's graveyard, but especially combined with a Murfolk Secret Keeper or a Gargoyle fueling the opponent's graveyard, it can uh, very quickly become a 2 mana counter spell or removal spell, which is quite efficient. And then we also have the full playset of Thought Erasure, which also helps us fuel the opponent's graveyard by taking card out of their hand and putting it in their graveyard. And Surveil 1 gives us a bit of additional card selection as well. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Murderous Rider as a removal spell of choice to take out both creatures and planeswalkers, and afterwards give us a 2-3 lifelinker, which is nice against the more aggressive decks. We have the full playset of Didn't Say Please, it's uh, kind of similar to Thought Collapse, you can play whichever one you prefer, and this will counter a spell and put the top 3 cards from the opponent's library into their graveyard, which further helps us enable all those graveyard synergies. And then also two copies of Cry of the Carnarium as our main deck sweeper of choice, giving everything minus 2, minus 2, and exiling everything that would end up in a graveyard this turn as well. So also particularly useful against the Cats combo deck, as it can even exile a cat that uh, was sacrificed in response to the Cry of the Carnarium, will still get exiled by it. Then at 5 mana we've got two copies of Enter the God Eternals, which does a lot of useful things, especially powerful against opposing aggro decks, as we get to deal 4 damage to a creature and gain 4 life, and we also get to make a 4-4 zombie army token, and target player puts the top 4 cards of their library into their graveyard, which further helps us enable all our various uh, cards that care about the opponent having a certain amount of cards in their graveyard. And then last but certainly not least, our main card draw engine in the deck is Into the Story, which normally costs 7 mana for an instant to draw 4 cards, but this spell costs 3 less to cast if an opponent has 7 or more cards in their graveyard, and if we can play this for 4 mana to draw 4 cards at instant speed, this turns into a very powerful card draw effect. So we definitely want to be able to enable it, since 7 mana is way too much for this effect, but usually between all these various mill effects, we can uh, reliably play this around turn 5, turn 6 for 4 mana, and because it's an instant, it plays quite well alongside our other instant speed interaction, like our counter spells and removal spells, so we can uh, potentially cast this on the opponent's end step, and refuel, find more answers, and eventually kill them with our Lockmere Serpent. And then our mana base has a lot going on, despite being only a 2-color deck. We've got the full playset of Fabled Passage, which can fix our mana, finding both islands and swamps, 
and uh, finding those basic land types also becomes important with our two castles. We've got Castle Lockthwain, which wants a Swamp in play to come into play untapped and potentially draws more cards in the late game, and Castle Ventress, which cares about islands, to come into play untapped. And we also have a one of Mystic Sanctuary, if we have three or more islands in play, it comes into play untapped, and then we can also put an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard back on top of our deck, which can be very useful at getting back an additional answer or card draw effect in the late game. And then the rest of our mana base, we've got six islands, seven swamps, as well as two copies of Dismal Backwater as an additional dual land that also gains one life but has to come into play tapped. And the full playset of a watery grave, of course, counting as both an island and a swamp for those uh, various cards like the castles that care about basic land types. And then looking at the sideboard, of course, since we're playing best of three with the deck today, we've got some additional sweeper effects in the form of Ritual of Soot against aggro decks. We've got Narset, Part of Veils, which shines especially against the opposing Jeskai Fires deck, which has a lot of different cards that uh, draw cards, and Narset can shut those down as well as find us some more answers. We've got two Mystical Disputes as an early counterspell against opposing blue decks, can maybe counter an early Teferi Time Raveler, which is not a card we want to face. We've got a Sorcerer's Spyglass, which can shut down the Witch's Oven out of the Cauldron's Familiar deck, since that's a card we otherwise struggle to deal with. We've got the full playset of Noxious Grasp against the green decks mostly, but it can also deal with uh, white decks, but uh, especially powerful against the Shifting Ceratops, which otherwise our deck can struggle with, since we can only take it out with Murderous Rider. And then uh, two Disdainful Strokes as our counterspell of choice over Negate, since now the Just Sky Fire deck has a lot of creatures at the top end, so being able to Disdainful Stroke a Cavalier is uh, sometimes better than a Negate would be, even though of course Negate has upside against Teferi Time Raveler. And then two copies of Ether Gust, which can uh, potentially also delay a Shifting Ceratops, but uh, pretty versatile as it can bounce a red or green permanent that's resolved as well. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And we're missing double blue in this hand, which could definitely hurt. But I can enable a Drown in the lock on turn 2. It's not great, but uh, we'll try it. And we're up against a black-green deck of some variety. Double Murder Strider, finale. Alright, so... I think I'm supposed to just keep up Drown and Lock here. It is a little awkward that we don't get to uh, fetch a second blue source right away and we don't get to play the Secret Keeper, but it's not like we need Secret Keeper as a blocker here. I guess we can let them have the Paradise Druids. I can still counter a 4-drop next turn, and we can eventually block the Druid as an attacker with the Secret Keeper. So we really want to keep our counter spells for more impactful cards from my opponent here. I like this Vivian. And now we can fetch our second blue. Alright, into the story. Could be great here once we cast or didn't say please. And Nissa has to be counter too. And now the perfect time to cast an into the story to refuel and find more answers. And a Drown in the Lock is another answer, perfect, so we have their next big play covered, and uh, otherwise we can play for mana into the story. Leyline Prowler we can let them keep, I think. Can always retroactively kill it with Drown in the Lock. So things worked out pretty well for us this game. Thought Erasure to take a look. And take another Nissa. The Grasp doesn't have any text against us. And then I could Sanctuary back a counter spell. That's probably the safest given that we already have in Into Story in hand. And I guess we'll go with the Didn't Say Please since mana shouldn't be an issue here. And then play Gargoyle and still have Drown in the Lock available. 
So we're in a very good position here. Of course, my opponent does have Castle Lockthwain, which can draw the more cards. But uh, still feeling good about things. I can take two. Alright, so we'll untap. And then we can start attacking with the Gargoyle here. Sometimes you can main phase into the story if you want to find another Gargoyle. Seems reasonable to do it here. Of course, they could castle, draw something good, plus something good with their draw step. But they probably won't have the mana to play two very impactful cards in the same turn. So, yeah, let's main phase the into the story, I guess. And then um, we'll keep up double blue. And there's our serpents. So we'll pass. And then the serpent can hopefully kill them in one or two attacks. Take another two, still want to prioritize keeping up a counter spell over preventing the life gain here. But we could kill at end of turn, although it would have to be with Drown instead of Rider. So I think we just pass. Can Thought Erasure again. Don't think that's going to be necessary now. We'll just hit for five. And then I guess we can play this untapped. So we can play Serpent and have Drown up. And these castle activations are definitely going to hurt them once we play Serpent to pressure them. And we have Drown to maybe counter an opposing Murderous Rider. So we'll block the Paradise Roots. Could have tried to ambush the Paradise Root with the Serpent. But there's a small chance we would have to do something else this turn. And I don't think we care too much about the Paradise Root since they're about to die to our attack with the Serpent and the Gargoyle. Alright, well, those early exchanges countering those Planeswalkers definitely played out quite well for us. After sideboard, my opponent could easily have a Shifting Ceratops. Of course, Noxious Grasp does a lot more than just killing a Shifting Ceratops in a matchup. So I think all four can easily be brought in. Uh, this Daneful Stroke counters their Planeswalkers. Um, they don't strike me like a Great Henge deck. Didn't see any adventures, so they're not especially adventure-focused. Can take another look at their graveyard here. Just kind of blank green Planeswalker mid-range. So we could also consider the Spyglass to shut down a Planeswalker. And then Aether Gusts. It's kind of like a bad Noxious Grasp in this matchup. I don't think we need it. And Narset also doesn't seem super great. Uh, the Secret Keeper is okay since it actually blocks some creatures so it can prevent a bit of damage while enabling our synergies. We could potentially uh, shave some Gargoyles. Cry can definitely be cut. Enter God Eternal seems not amazing, but playable can kill a Nyssa land as well. The problem with Spyglass is that it doesn't shut down Nyssa's passive, which is still potentially a problem. So let's take that out. I think we shave two Gargoyles, just because I don't think we need them as early blockers. And my opponent might still keep in their Murderous Riders, so it's also not the most reliable win condition. If we were up against, let's say, a Lovestruck Beast type of deck, where the 5-4 can trade off for Lovestruck Beast, I would like it a lot more. But it doesn't look like they're playing the card. This hand's a little on the sketchy side, but we do get to Thought Erasure on turn 2. Hopefully find a second blue for Dinsay, please. Don't need to worry about Veil of Summer anymore. Alright, double Murder Shider Leyline Prowler. Yeah, I'll just take a Prowler. And, um... 
yeah, I guess we'll keep the castle. It's not a second blue source, but I still want to keep hitting my land drops. And then I'm just not going to play the Ventress Gargoyle into a Murder Strider. They did find another Prowler, which I could Noxious Grasp right now. But then if they top deck a Vivian, they can resolve it and uh, keep it around. So maybe I should just wait and then... Maybe end of turn we can grasp the Prowler. Alright, Questing Beast seems like a better target. Alright, so now we have double blue up. Can take a bit of damage from the Prowler, that's not too bad. Not gonna run out a Gargoyle into a Murder Strider, I don't think. Take two. Currently two cards in Graveyard, so we couldn't even kill the Prowler, if, even if we wanted to. So we'll just uh, take our turn again. Developing our mana is good. Now I could consider playing the Gargoyle, but then I guess I still wouldn't have my uh, three mana counter up since we don't have triple blue. So yeah, I think we just keep passing. Sadly, also can't use Castle Ventress, which would maybe be useful if we didn't use our mana in any other way. But we're getting close to just casting uh, into the story, which is going to be quite good. And two damage per turn, while annoying isn't... Uh, gonna kill us anytime soon. So yeah, can't really do much here. Don't want to castle Lockthwain since we have a few too many cards in hand. Watergrave, so I could take two, play Gargoyle, but then they can end of turn Murder Strider and I would be forced to counter it, which seems bad. I can Serpent end of turn, which they can kill, but at least having double blue for castle is useful, or triple blue in this case. So probably still Shock here. Hits for two. Opponent passes. So yeah, I could play out a Lockmere Serpent, which they might murder Strider. Um, and then I can untap, play Gargoyle. And if they murder Strider again, I can counter the second murder Strider. That's one approach. Or I can just cry with Castle Ventress. I think I'm okay running out the Serpent, even if it uh, gets killed here. So one Murder Strider down. And then we'll play Gargoyle. And a Drown in the Lock can counter a Murder Strider, so we still have maybe Drown for something else. So now they attack with a Prowler, do we block and trade or do we just keep taking it? Alright, they're gonna force the issue, so... Uh, I guess never mind, I can't counter the Rider with Drown, since they only have two cards in Graveyard. Nah, I guess we'll didn't say please then. They shouldn't be able to do anything too broken this turn. Alright, a third Murder Strider, fair enough. But now Drown in the Lock is turned on, and we're close to casting 4 mana into the story to refuel, so it's not too bad. I could Drown to kill the Prowler right now, deny one mana. It's probably fine, and then we can still... either counter something or refill with into the story. Another Prowler, that's fine. Alright, find our own Murder Strider. Another Secret Keeper. I guess I'm not opposed to just Murder Strider, kill Prowler, play Murder Strider and have Drown and Lock available. And then I guess I don't know for sure what I want to Fable Passage, but the deck thinning could be nice. I guess we'll get another island here.
And at some point we can get our Serpent back. More Prowlers. Sure. So let's see, how much mana do we have? Nine total this turn. So yeah, I could return the Serpent. Um, but then the Drown in the Lock doesn't do much unless we also want a Secret Keeper, which I guess still works out. Second Secret Keeper, mill them for four. Casualties of War, that's a potentially powerful card, although we don't have many different permanent types in play usually. And then if I exile five cards, this is still X equals seven, which should be plenty. So yeah, let's get back Serpents. And then I guess we exile some creatures that they might be able to get back from the graveyard, who knows. I don't know if there's a way for them to get back casualties. Can't think of any way they could get that back. So I'll just get rid of creatures. And then uh, we'll pass. Could flash in the Lockmere Serpent end of turn. Opponent has used most of their Murder Striders already, so they won't have many instant speed ways of killing it end of turn. Or I could play it safe and just activate one of my castles and then next turn play Serpent with Drown backup. We'll see. Vivian, I do want to counter. And a uh, Murder Strider, right? Don't think they'll be attacking with their Murder Striders since they don't want me gaining to life. And then we'll just untap. Alright, so the Serpent is gonna have to do some heavy lifting. Probably worth it to play an extra Secret Keeper as a blocker. And then uh, we'll pass a turn here. Set a stop on upkeep in case we want to castle Ventress. But at the very least we can draw some cards with the Serpent by sacking some Swamps. That's also why the Fabled Passage is nice alongside Serpent, so we can actually fetch lands we can sacrifice to it. But if they have another Planeswalker here, we could be in a bit of trouble. Alright, opponent does nothing. Not sure why the Leyline Prowler is not attacking. But uh, yeah, let's play Serpents. Resolves. Could activate it, but we could keep up the bluff that we have a Counterspell in hand by untapping first. Which is probably worth it. And then upkeep, do we Castle Ventress? I think we do. Try and find another Counterspell. Drown in the Lock will do. Do we want a Murder Strider? I'll keep it second from the top here. And then... Don't think I want to start attacking with the Serpent quite yet. So I'm just gonna pass and then we could draw the Murder Strider if we have to at instant speed with the Serpent. I've got to Drown as an extra counter spell with 8 cards in Graveyard. And eventually the Serpent is going to help us take over. can also start thinking about activating Castle Lockthwain. Eh, still no attacks with the Prowler. So... Yeah, let's just... Sack one Swamp here. Draw a card. And then I could Murder Strider the Prowler. And still have Drown up. And then the Serpent can start attacking. It seems fine. Not a Serpent, not Legendary, so we can have two in play at the same time if we want to. No need to make it unblockable. We'll keep the Murder Strider back. And then I guess play another one out. There's a fourth Murder Strider, I believe this is. Could just let this happen, honestly, since we've got another Serpent. Yeah, sure. Eh, 
And still just gonna keep up Drown here. I guess I could activate Serpent now, since for two mana there's nothing too bad they could do. Sure. We'll uh, sack a Swamp to draw cards. And I guess we can do it again. Alright, untap, another Into the Story is perfect. And uh, Serpent could still attack here, I think. Because if they attack us back with their Murder Striders, we can double block. And we'll just pass. Nissa. I could let it resolve and then just Murder Strider it instead of countering. Since it's not like they have many untapped forests here, they probably would have wanted to tap uh, differently if they had something big to play afterwards. And a 3-3 doesn't matter all that much, since we can block it with the Secret Keeper too. So in response, I guess I can Murder Shider Nissa, but yeah, we'll let this happen. The one extra mana probably doesn't matter too much. Can also take out Nissa with a Serpent if we sacrifice an island. So I don't strictly have to Murder Strider it, but there's probably not many better targets. This could be a Casualties of War. Finale of Eternity, X equals 4 instead. I guess that's worth a Counterspell. So I guess a big uh, Finale with the Nissa in play could be potentially game-winning. That's also why exiling the creatures earlier with the Lock Mirror activation was useful. Alright, sweet. So we managed to 2-0 uh, this Black-Green mid-range Planeswalker deck. There's definitely tougher Black-Green decks that we could face. For example, you can imagine how a Black-Green Adventure deck that has an early 1-mana Innkeeper, that is kind of a must-kill creature, could be an issue, because then if we have to spend our Drown in the Locks killing Innkeepers, then we won't have them as counter spells for the follow-up uh, Planeswalkers, potentially. So that matchup seemed to favor us more than another Black Green version would. But uh, nonetheless, that was a pretty good game. On to the next one. Alright, we'll be on the play. And... Hmm. This sounds pretty bad. Having two Serpents in our opener is not what we want. But we do get to play an early Secret Keeper as a blocker and have a three-mana counter on the play. So it's not the worst hand, but I think Double Serpent is just kind of like keeping a five-card hand at the moment. So we'll take a mulligan. This is a bit better for sure. I think I have to keep into the story as our way to refuel. I'll keep the Secret Keeper to enable it and drown. So I'm either bottoming the Rider or enter. Probably keep the Rider as it's a cheaper removal spell here. Although enter can also potentially enable into the story. Up against, looks like, a band kind of ramp deck. Alright, so... Um, yeah, I don't expect to need Secret Keeper and I might want to drown something early. Alright. Double black is useful. So, still just gonna pass. For mana, opponent does nothing. Now I could play the Secret Keeper. Still have Drown Up. Maybe gives away a bit of information that we don't have a Didn't Say Please or similar in, in hand. And it could potentially resolve a Cavalier, but I wouldn't be able to counter a Cavalier anyway. Although now with, with the Fabled Passage, putting a fifth card in the graveyard, I actually can Drown in the Lock. Alright. Hitting our Land Drops, that's good. And we're getting very close to casting into the story. Scries to the bottom. Um, 
not quite sure what to fetch with the Fable Passage. Just gonna untap here. It's probably gonna be an island, but you never know. Alright, I mean, into the story is great, but drawing multiples without uh, it costing four mana is not where we want to be. That's okay, we're pretty close to having it cost four. Opponent's not being doing much, so they might have a handful of counter spells here, or they're trying to set up uh, two plays in the same turn. There's a white mana. Gilded Goose, alright. Do we want to murder Strider the Goose? Seems a bit excessive, but it would put an extra card in their graveyard to enable these into the stories. And then into the story can find us more murder Riders, so maybe it's actually fine. Thrilled Mystic, we can counter back. Opponent has shown that they're playing with the uh, Mystical Dispute, so they could counter back, but then, uh, or into the story is enabled, so that's fine. Alright, Quench instead, that's unexpected. Fair enough. I guess, never mind, at the moment they would only have uh, six cards in Graveyard, but a crowd of Carnarium's not bad. Sadly, this exiles, so still doesn't help with uh, Into the Story. But killing the goose seems worth it. Another one. More untapped mana. Alright, so the Gargoyle will eventually get us to that uh, seventh card in Graveyard. Although it could get bounced around by Teferi or answered some other way. Alright, Sabotage, Zero Points, playing a lot more counter spells than I anticipated. But uh, into the story, after the surveil and uh, sabotage got used, is now 4 mana, which is quite good. A 4 mana instant speed draw spell is one way of beating all these uh, counter spells. And then eventually we can uh, resolve the serpent. Sadly, Teferi does uh, foil that plan a little bit. So now I'm forced to main phase into the story and look for some action. Gets quenched. That's painful when we have uh, five lands in play. But we've got two more into the stories. Opponents also pretty light on cards. So Teferi is definitely a problem, but can eventually deal with it if we find a murder strider or if the serpent can attack it. We've seen Hydroid Crisis as one of the opponent's win conditions here. Haven't seen much else. They could be playing Ambusher as well, I suppose. Thought Erasure. Pretty good to take away a counterspell. But it would mean I can't into the story. Hmm. If they have nothing, casting the Thought Erasure first, of course, sets me back a turn. But if they have a counterspell, then... I might as well get it out of their hands. Opponent quenches, so I'll pay for it since we are not going to use the mana otherwise. So we can surveil one. And yeah, Murder Rider is probably good enough. Sadly, I can't into the story find a land and Murder Rider to ferry. So I'll have to choose which one I go for. They did not castle an upkeep, maybe an oversight. But it looks like they found something good. Could be Nissa. Hydroid Crisis, maybe. Alright, there's Nissa. Alright, so I guess now I'm forced to murder Strider the Nissa instead. They're gonna minus the fairy just to draw a card. You. 
Yeah, I don't think I can let them untap with in this side if they ever find a Hydroid Crisis here. They can surveil twice with the castle to find it. But um, not loving the fact that we can only play one spell per turn here. And they could have another counter spell in hand. Right, it's just going to be a castle activation. So Nissa will go down, but my opponent kept both on top. So we'll pass. Second Nissa. Yep. They could bounce the Secret Keeper, but at least we got rid of the Fairy. Maybe they have another one in hand, which is why they minused aggressively. But we are taking six. A Night Pack Ambusher to play around a counter spell. Yeah, that's a few too many threats for us to deal with. At least we know about the uh, Ambusher, which is useful. So now the plan is probably just to play Serpents, try to ambush the Ambusher somehow. We do give them the opportunity to counter the Serpent, but I think the only way we come back in this game is if we successfully are able to ambush a creature with a Serpent and then maybe take out Nyssa and uh, proceed from there. I'm probably still dying to the Nyssa lands, even if I do kill the Ambusher here. So we'll get an island, I think. And hope this Serpent resolves. Did they find another counterspell? They did. Alright, GG's. So that's gonna be... Game 1 going to the... Banned Flash deck. So definitely a matchup for Dispute to counter early to fairies. Grasp can kill Nissas and Ambushers, so seems okay. And then do we want this Daneful Stroke? Grasp also, of course, killing Teferi is pretty big. So it seems like an excellent card in the matchup. And Narset can stop Hydroid Crisis from doing stuff. Stops the fairies. I think Narset's worth it. And then do we want Stroke? It counters Ambushers and Nissans, but it's awkward against the Fairy. Yeah, I don't think I want Stroke. Ether Gust can be used as a bounce spell other than a counter spell, but overall a bit more narrow than the Noxious Grasp. Uh, hand Disruption is great, don't need Cry. Android God Eternals could be okay if we can catch an Ambusher with it. Even killing a Gilded Goose is okay, but of course it is a 5 mana sorcery, which we might not be able to resolve easily. So it's probably worth cutting. And then... Could see shaving a couple didn't say please. Against early Teferis maybe. On the play we can keep it, but on the draw we'll take it out. I like Gargoyle as an early threat that we can resolve and then maybe pressure their Planeswalkers with. Secret Keeper I'm not convinced by since... It's uh... The O4 body doesn't do all that much. I mean it blocks a Nissa land. So it's not horrible, but four of them might be too many. But of course it is useful at enabling Drown and into the story. But I might cut two of them and then maybe just shave a couple Drowns. As we don't have as many Secret Keepers to enable them. Or I could shave some of my more expensive cards that I might not be able to resolve. Uh, not entirely sure here what the last cuts should be. Maybe cut one then say please, shave one into the story. Try something like this, since we also have Narset as an additional card engine now. And we'll be on the play. A reasonable hand on the play. On the draw, of course, the didn't say please would be a lot sketchier. And then we want to fetch an island turn one. But yeah, on the draw, 
probably gonna cut at least another Dense, please. And maybe swap some cards around. Turn one goose. So I guess I can turn two to Ferius now, which of course would uh, be pretty bad. Alright, now I have the option of keeping up disputes. Yeah, maybe it's necessary. Turn two to Ferry would be pretty backbreaking otherwise. And then next turn I can go Gargoyle plus keep up disputes. Might be good enough. Although I won't be able to counter an Ambusher on, on three, I guess, with a dispute. Yeah, just a tapped temple. So we can play Gargoyle, keep up disputes, start milling them, and have something to pressure their Planeswalkers with. But we could see them just uh, play land 3, use a goose for mana and main phase an ambusher, for example, which I wouldn't be able to deal with. The fairy I can dispute, they could dispute back. And looks like they have it too, alright. I mean, keeping up Dense Police would not have uh, played out any better here. So we could murder Strider to ferry. I think we can let them plus one turn, doesn't bother me too much. Unless we just absolutely need to get rid of the ferry. They can't Nissa me next turn at least. But of course if we wait on the rider they could potentially counter it. Which maybe is too bad. Yeah, I guess we'll just kill it now. Don't love the fact that we don't have triple blue, so I can't play Gargoyle with Counterspell Backup. If they have another Teferi, of course, that would be pretty bad. Untapped Breeding Pool, so they can make food with a goose. Noxious Grasps, not bad. I think we still want to prioritize keeping up uh, Dinsay, please, here. So I don't think I'm playing Gargoyle. I mean, I could just play two threats here, Rider and Gargoyle, since I have the Grasp to kill on this if it resolves, and then even protect it with Dunsay, please, if they have, like, another uh, cheap counterspell. So it wouldn't be horrible to just tap out here. Well, let's try it. I'm okay if this gets quenched. It's another Growth Spiral instead. But our opponent's out of land, so they have all action in hand. Opponent has four cards in graveyards. I know my responsibility. The ferry bounces Gargoyle, but now Ryder can threaten the ferry. And another spiral. Opponent's taken a lot of damage from their mana base this game. So Ryder goes after the ferry. And then we can play Gargoyle and have Dense please up. Alright, never mind. Pun chumps with a goose. So, I guess they have a Nissan hand and they really want to make sure it resolves. But a uh, Grasp could still take care of it. Of course, I could Grasp the Ferry and then just counter the Nissa with a Dense please. If I want to give up on playing Gargoyle this turn, which could also be reasonable. Because, yeah, if I just play Gargoyle, pass, then my opponent could play Nissa, untap mana and still have a counterspell afterwards. So maybe I'm supposed to grasp the Teferi, because I can't of course grasp end of turn because of Teferi. Alright, let's try it. But yeah, you can see how Teferi can be pretty annoying to play against for this deck. And then next turn we can finally play Gargoyle with uh, counterspell backup. Right, there's Nissa. And we'll fetch an island. Thought Erasure's great too. 
I guess we can start there and then decide whether or not we want to play Gargoyle or Keep Up or Counterspell. So Infinite Frilled Mystics, uh, Krasis could be quite good, and an Ambusher. So if I leave them the Ambusher, they're probably just going to ambush her end of turn. Which I could then didn't say please. Krasis, if they draw land, would be a 4-4 that draws two, which can trade off for my Gargoyle. I think I'm taking the Krasis here. And bottom lands. And then I'm forced to keep up Dunsay, please, to stop like a main phase ambusher, I guess. And if we play Gargoyle and the Frilled Mystic, I can still counter back. But then the ambusher could definitely be a problem. Although my opponent's at 10, so it only takes two hits from the Gargoyle to kill them. But I guess a goose can maybe gain them a bit of life. The fact that we didn't play Gargoyle that they know about, of course, also tips them off a little bit. So we'll attack with Rider. If they want to ambush her, then we can counter it. They're just gonna Mystic. I'm okay with the trade. Could potentially main phase into the story, hoping to find an island. Don't think that's worth it. Let's just play Gargoyle and pass. I do have a lot of Murder Riders and Noxious Grasps, which could just kill the Ambusher as well, even if it resolves. But if they top deck in this, I'm gonna regret tapping out. So we'll just uh, take our turn here. Don't want to get into the story mystic Thought Racer is great, although that would eat the Mystic, but then we can... Let's see, yeah, they don't have enough mana to play both for mana spells, and then I could then say please the Mystic and take the Ambusher, which is a good exchange. But I can attack first here, so we'll start there. And then we'll take a look. Right, they're gonna ambush her first. I guess we'll counter that then. Did they maybe draw a quench or dispute? Another ambusher makes sense. At this point I might just take Mystic and then we can resolve into the story and we don't care about ambusher since we have a flyer. And we're at 25. Yeah, that makes sense. And Serpent seems great. So points at 5, they can make a bit of food to offset it. But they're still under quite a bit of pressure from Gargoyle. And now we've got two powerful instants that we could uh, try and resolve. Main phase is Ambusher. I might do the same and main phase my Serpents. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for it here. Since they don't have uh, three mana for like a Sinister Sabotage now. And then an unblockable Serpent is enough to kill them. And yeah, opponent packs it up, so... We had to make some ugly trades to get rid of Teferi, but in the end we were able to get their Noxious Grasp, of course, playing a big role in that game as well. So now that we're on the draw, I don't like Didn't Say Please as much, so I think we cut at least one more. Has my uh, opinion changed on Narset? Still seems okay, but it does get worse on the draw. And what do we bring in? Maybe an extra Secret Keeper to help me turn on early Drown in the Locks. The card's definitely not amazing in the matchup, since the 0 doesn't do much. Spyglass is still not amazing, since the passives from both the Fairy and Nissa are a problem. So, yeah, I might just bring in an extra Secret Keeper and try this. Then we can maybe attack with Gargoyle a bit faster and 
have this be a two mana counter or removal spell. Yeah, we'll try this. Alright, what do we think of this hand? The castle's definitely awkward, not letting a secret keeper turn one. But overall, I think we keep and hope to draw an island. And then I guess we'll settle for a turn to Thought Erasure, otherwise we could have maybe kept up uh, Drown in the Lock. A Water Grave. Yeah, I think that works out. Thought Erasure now and then next turn I can Secret Keeper plus Keep Up Drown. Don't expect this to resolve, but we'll make him counter it. Disputes, alright. So do they have turn 3 to ferry? Could murder Strider it. Alright. Given that they plus, I don't feel as bad just killing it with the murder Strider. They could main phase like an ambusher and have it resolve. And then we'll need to drown in the lockets. They're missing double green at the moment, so no frilled mystic mana. No ambusher mana. It's gonna be a spiral. And no lands, alright. They might still have another dispute or quench here. So let's start with uh, Venture Deep. And then probably pass a turn. So now eight cards in graveyard. It's a fairy. I guess I'll dispute. And they could dispute back and have it resolve. All right. Let's see if they plus or minus now. This time they'll minus to get the card. All right, so... Guess we'll play the gargoyle now. And since I can cast Drown, I might as well play Secret Keeper. Let's see if they have the second green for Nissa. No double green yet. Could be Crisis for three. Which I could kill with Drown and then kill Teferi. But then we're out of counter spells for potential Nissa, which at this point are likely to have. And then... Maybe I should have waited with Fetching since I don't know for sure what to get and I wouldn't mind drawing a lands. Alright, double Gargoyle. And yeah, at this point I think we just kill Krasis, take out Teferi and play another Gargoyle and go on the beatdown. I guess I might be okay if they chum block and just play another Gargoyle. And then two five four flyers could even take out a resolved Nissa. Let's try this. And if they play a crisis for four, now I can still drown it and have my gargoyles keep attacking. So it's a close decision there whether to just kill the crisis and make sure the fairy dies or not. But the upside of potentially killing the fairy and still having drown as an actual counter spell is pretty high. All right, there's Nissa. Can untap Forest or Temple Garden, no Breeding Pool to untap. So, it's gonna be the Forests. They could attack, but I could just block with the Secret Keeper and another Drown. All right, I guess we are just attacking Nissa. 
I could drown killing the forest first, which I wouldn't mind. Gets disputed. Sure. And we'll probably kill it again. So what happens if I kill Nyssa? They could play another Nyssa. Which we could kill on the following turn once again, although I guess never mind, the fairy could bounce a gargoyle and then we would be one damage short. Could just kill the fairy now, but then they could play a big crisis to pull ahead. Which I guess I could counter. Since they have 11 cards in Graveyard, but they would draw so many cards off of it that uh, I would probably fall behind. So yeah, let's probably still kill Nyssa, and then I think I'm just killing the land. And then they might be unable to play another Nyssa. And if they want to minus the fairy, that's fine by me. They also don't have double green for Mystic now. And they're just going to main phase the chemistries, alright. And yeah, opponent just concedes. I was going to be able to play Gargoyle, play Murder Strider this turn. And by playing lands before playing Gargoyle, I could play around a Mystical Dispute, and yeah, opponent doesn't have a great way to deal with 5-4 Flyers, so I guess it didn't draw like a Hydroid Crisis, or they were still missing double green and just drew a bunch of uh, double green cards, that's also possible. So yeah, I lost the first one, being stuck with uh, all those into the stories, but in the sideboard of the games, Noxious Grasp definitely helped a lot, being a reactive answer to both the Fairy and Nyssa, and the Ambusher too. So yeah, overall, the uh, mill control deck, pretty decent. Definitely can struggle against the Cauldron's Familiar plus uh, Witch's Oven combo, since all those cards are so cheap, and uh, Spyglass is one of the few reactive answers to it, but uh, of course Cry can sometimes help. So that's probably a bad matchup. The Just Sky Fires deck is usually okay, since we have counter spells for their big plays, and uh, after sideboard it gets even better with uh, Dispute and Narset, among other things. But of course an early Teferi from that deck can also be quite powerful against us. So overall I would say it's a reasonable best of three standard deck, that uh, if you like blue-black control or kind of mill synergies, you could enjoy. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.